Can you make After Effects level animations in CapCut PC? Well, that's the question I want to know. Last month, I showed you guys how to make Iman Gazi style animations using both After Effects and Premiere Pro, and that was really well received. But I want to look after my CapCut audience too, because you guys have been really great. So today, I've set myself three challenges, each of them to create Iman Gazi style animations within CapCut so you and I can both level up our editing skills. Oh, and also, I'll be giving you some free assets that you can use to help recreate this style throughout the video. So first up, I've got this little mock clip here that we'll be editing to match Iman's style. And the first challenge I wanna tackle is these subtitles. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up CapCut and create some captions. With CapCut's AI captioning feature, this is incredibly easy. And we've done this a few times on this channel. Just go to text, auto captions, select the language you want and click generate. This will load up the captions for your entire video super fast. To edit the style to match Iman's, just select one of these caption layers and make sure this box is ticked. So first I'm gonna change up the font to Monster App Bold, which will give us a nice sans serif font, just like Iman. Set the color to white and then move it down to the bottom of the screen. And you'll see that all the other captions in the video do the same thing. But let's put a pause on those subtitles and now work on this grid background, which is a key feature to Iman's subtitle style. Now I've actually included a grid and transparent black background that you can get from this asset folder in the link in the description down below, completely free that you can use within this video. So I'm gonna grab this PNG, import it into CapCut, and then to make it so it just covers the bottom part of the screen, we're gonna apply a mask to it. So with that grid layer selected, head over to the mask tab, select horizontal, flip that, drag that right to the bottom and increase the feather to about 39. With that, let's now focus on the animation style. So first off with the text, let's add in a purpley blue glow with a 53 intensity and 93 range. Also, you can play around with these settings to get it exactly how you like. These are just ones that I thought looked cool. Then to make it slide up just like Aman, select all the subtitle clips, head over to the animation tab and in the in tab, select slide up. And now we have this getting much closer. Now to have the background fade in at the same time, you can just select that grid clip and select the animate in fade in transition and it will go in as the text fades up to matching Iman style. You may just want to adjust the timing slightly on both of these transitions to get it how you want it to look. And you can do that at any time by dragging this little slider at the bottom. But there's one more thing that we can really do to match Iman's subtitle style, and that's to have this gradient color change as the text comes up onto screen. To achieve this, just select one of the subtitle layers and uncheck the apply to all box. Now go to the end of the in animation where the text is stationary on screen and go back a couple of frames. Then in the color section, making sure this is set to white, click this little keyframe button. Now go to the start of that clip and then in the color section, change that to a purpley blue, kind of matching that glow. And you'll see as we play back the clip, not only does the text fade up, but it also changes color just like Iman's. Now to apply this to all of the subtitles, just control click on each of these keyframes on the first one that we did, press control C, and then just go to the start of each of those subtitle layers and press control V, and you'll see that it will paste in these color change keyframes for each one. And if we do that for all of the remaining subtitle layers, we have this really cool subtitle look that was really easy to create. And to have a better workflow and more variety within your edits, I'd also select all of these subtitle layers and the grid and disable them by pressing V. Then whenever I'm going through and wanna add in the subtitle to emphasize something, I can just select them and the grid and press V to enable them once again. And this is something that Iman does within his own videos, not always having subtitles, but just using them to emphasize key points. And with that, I think we can check this challenge off. But now let's move on to something a little bit more spicy. So for this next challenge, I wanna figure out how to create these vector animations, which have been a big part of Iman's style over the past year. So to really push myself, I want to do two different types, one with a character and one with a vehicle. Let's start with the character. Now this one took a little bit more research and planning and because CapCut is one of the best free talking heads video editing software out there, I wanted to continue to use free assets for you guys. So I found this vector illustration on Freepik, which is a site that Iman's editor actually uses himself. Now looking at it, we don't really want this background, the text or the icon. And I really need to separate and isolate a few elements within this image so I can actually go about animating it within CapCut. Now again, we want to keep this free, so I'm going to be using an alternative to Adobe Illustrator, fixthephoto.com, there'll be a link in the description, and there's a bunch of different options you can choose from. I just found this one and it works. But basically, we just open up this vector illustration file on this website, and you can see all the layers here once we click this layers panel. And basically, all we want to do is hide or delete any element that we don't want to be seen. So the background, the text, the icon, all of that, we can just hide or delete it. 
Now my objective with this animation is to animate the hand moving up and down with that megaphone. So it's kind of swinging and rotating, meaning I need to separate that arm and the megaphone from the body so I can actually animate it. So I just go through all of those elements, finding the megaphone, the hand and the arm and putting them into their own group and then separating this from the body. Once I've done that, I hide the arm, export the body as a PNG with the shadow attached and then hide all of those layers before re-enabling the arm and exporting that as well as a PNG. With both of those elements, I jump back into CapCut and import them into my project with the addition of this background that I found on FreePick as well. Now I found the best workflow and approach to these animations is to start a new project for each one that you do and then bring them back into your main video. So I drag those assets in and change the ratio to 16 by nine. I select both the body and arm layer and scale them up at the same time so they stay within proportion of each other. But here's the important part. If I click on the arm layer and try to rotate that now, it's going to rotate from the center of the frame, not the center of the arm. But there's a quick and easy solution within CapCut to make this work. I created this image that marks out the center of the frame and dragged it into CapCut. You can also find this in the asset folder in the link in the description down below. But basically with this mark in the frame, I drag the arm so the pivot point that I want is in line with the center of the frame. So for this one, the end of the arm where it attaches to the body. Now selecting that arm layer, I right click and select create compound clip. And just like that, when I go to the rotation properties of this compound clip, when I rotate it, it's going to rotate from the center of the frame, which is now where that arm joint is. From there, I can just drag this layer back in line with the rest of the body and rotate it to animate it. But you'll see that something is a little bit off here. And I actually did the wrong pivot point and I actually need it to rotate from the top of the arm, this little pointy part, so you don't see a gap when it rotates into the body. So to fix that, I just undo the compound clip, drag that pointy part to the center of the frame, recreate it into a compound clip, and then drag it in line with the animation before keyframing the rotation values to get this really cool animation. To make this smoother though, I'm gonna right click on that clip and select show keyframe animation, and then selecting each of these keyframes individually, select one of these either ease in or ease out graphs. And once I have a nice smooth flow between a few, I just copy and paste these keyframes throughout the clip to get a smooth animation going through the duration. Once that's done, we just export it as a 4K file and import it back into our main project. Now we can keyframe a zoom in or apply a film grain overlay, which is something that a Mars editor does quite a bit. And with that done, I feel like I can now half tick that box, but first let's do that vehicle animation. So the goal for this one is to have the car roll into frame and have the background move into frame also. So I went on free pick and found this background and this car pack. So we're gonna edit this image again, selecting the car we want, deleting the rest and scaling that up so it's a little bit bigger. From there, I move the tires to a layer of their own, export the body and then export the tires individually. However, so I don't have to do that create compound clip technique within CapCut, I can just transform these tires and move them to the center of the frame and then export them so they're ready to rotate right from the beginning. Now with the car body and tires as PNGs, we can drag them into CapCut and work on the fun part. So I begin by scaling up both the car body and tires at the same time to keep the proportions correct, drag in the background as well, make sure everything lines up. And now I just move one of the tires into position because both of these tires look the same and they're gonna have the exact same animation. So I just need one of them first and I can just duplicate that and move it across to have the same animation and same flow as the other one. So I create a keyframe animation just slightly from the start of the clip. And then I go to the point where I want the car to stop in the center of the frame. But before I change the rotation value, I need to think about how this car tire is gonna rotate as the car moves forward. And by just doing a little bit of fiddling, I can see that rotating it clockwise or rotating it in positive values is gonna give that effect, that illusion as though the car is moving into frame. So I adjusted this value to be around 700. But if I play it back right now, you can see that the car doesn't smoothly come to a stop. It kind of goes really fast and then stops rotating, which doesn't look natural at all. So let's fix that. So showing the keyframe animation again, I select an ease in or ease out graph, which doesn't really matter which one you select. You just want to get this handle here and I just drag it out. So the line goes up and then smoothly tapers off to be basically flat as it comes into that final keyframe. This is going to give it a really nice, smooth and gradual roll in to a stop. And when I'm happy with how that looks, I just simply duplicate that tire layer and move it across to the second position. And now both of them move in sync with each other. And so now we can select both that car body and the two tires and create a compound clip so we can move them all together in sync and not have to work with each of those individual layers. But looking at the car, it really needs a shadow. And I could have actually used the one from that vector file itself, 
but I didn't think of it back then. So I'm just gonna drag in an oval PNG shape that I created, line it up with the car, change the opacity and the blend mode so it looks more realistic. Now to have the car actually drive onto screen, I moved the playhead to the point where the tires stop rotating. I then create a position keyframe for both the car and the shadow. I then move to the start of the clip and selecting both the car and shadow layer at the same time this time, drag them so they're off screen. This will then by default create a new position keyframe. To make this smoother than butter, I select the same animation graph for both the car layer and the shadow layer and it looks really cool. And the final touch is to just move the background with some simple keyframes so it comes in from the left as the car comes in from the right and we have this really cool animation. Now I gotta say I really like how this one turned out and we can now check that box. But now let's move on to the coolest and hardest challenge, creating this text overlay. So the first step is to search for white in the stock material section, which is actually a very handy feature. But when you do that, select and import this white leather background into the project, and then also go and get this black one. Now leave the white one as is, but on the black layer, select the mask tab and select rectangle and then round the corners out. So we have a shape that sort of matches that rounded rectangle that Iman uses to house the overlay. Now to get this blue line, head over to the stickers tab, search for line, and then select this one, which looks really cool. To make it fit the layout a little bit better, adjust the scale by first unclicking uniform scale and then just dragging it out. To change the color to blue, add a black and white filter on top of that and then a bright blue texture from the stock material section once again. Set the blend mode of this to linear burn and you'll see that this line changes color. Select all three of these layers, the black and white filter, that blue color and the line and create a compound clip. And from there, just set the blend mode of this compound clip to screen and you'll see we now have a nice blue line over our rectangle. Now let's add in some text with this wiggly animation. So for this, I use a sans serif font like Monstrat or Avenir Extra Bold, which is the one that I personally like to use myself. Set the font to white. And I really liked how this bounce in left animation looked for this particular overlay. And then to get that sort of wiggly text effect, I selected the wobble three in loop animations and set the speed to 3.1 seconds. And then for the money value, I selected tremble and set the speed to 0.8 seconds. And it looks really cool altogether. For the final little touch, I added in a dollar symbol, set the color to blue and use the slide in right animation to have all of these come in at the same time. A little bit of an extra touch we can do here to match a month's style is to add a glow to the monetary value. And then there's one little effect that we can do to really enhance all of this and make it look like a man's overlay. And that's to have this shine effect come across the screen. And it's actually really easy to do. I just duplicated the white leather background layer, applied a split mask, dragging it in. So it's basically just a thin line and increased the feather. So we have this sort of subtle, thin glowy line. I rotated this a little bit, set the blend mode to screen and opacity to 22, and then just keyframe the position values of this, sliding it across screen and making it smooth with some animation graphs. From there, I export this at 4K resolution, bring it into my project and apply another rectangle mask with rounded corners. So it's just a thin line of that white around the black, which helps us form a stroke around this object. I then set the blend mode of this entire overlay to hard light so you could still see the background footage, which is kind of like a man's effect, and then use the zoom one in animation to have it zoom in with kind of like a blur at the beginning, just like a man's, and it looks super sweet. And with all those challenges now checked off, please enjoy this playback of all the effects we created in this video. And if you wanna check out CapCut yourself, be sure to use the links in the description. Peace, and remember, you're only one video away.